Hello and what's up peeps, this is the Geek Artist back again with another video and based on my last week's Q&A post where I wanted to know from you guys whether you want to see me post a quick speed art time lapse video of this artwork or a detailed process breakdown, a proper tutorial and based on all the positive response, the answer is clear, it's gonna be a process video. So here it is guys, hope you guys enjoy it and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And thank you guys so much for all the love and support. So let's do this. To start off with the composition, what I'm doing is I'm splitting my frame, my canvas into nine sort of equal parts. I'm doing roughly, I'm trying to sketch out the line of thirds. That is, I'm basically drawing four lines. And the four points where these lines meet the intersection points are where you'd want your subject or focal point to be centered around that makes for a much more balanced and aesthetically pleasing composition rather than having a subject at the dead center or at the edges of your frame. So for this artwork I want my uh, subject or focal point to be somewhere around the, uh, the fourth or the bottom right intersection point of these lines. Now keeping that in mind I'm gonna draw some shapes. For this I'm gonna be drawing some mountains. As you can see, I'm using the lasso tool to draw out a rough shape for the mountains. And I'm gonna fill them with colors now. What I'm doing right now is I'm drawing leading lines. I'm using some shapes, some natural shapes of the mountains and the river bank. If this is to be a river between the mountains, then I'm using the, these lines to create leading lines that draws your attention towards a particular area that is our focal point. I want to guide the viewer's attention towards a particular area where I want my subject to be. That's the whole purpose of leading lines. And now I'm gonna add some basic details to the mountains. I'm drawing out very rough and basic shapes and shading the textures for the mountain on the left side. Some shadow for the mountain and some greenish vegetation for the banks where the mountain meets the river. I'm just uh, sort of curving out the mountain shape very roughly with some some uh, darker tones and some highlights, some very subtle highlights. And then I'm gonna move on to the mountain on the right side with the similar treatment. Rocks gradually turning to vegetation and then the bank and then the river. Now for the background, I, I expect there to be a much more larger mountain in the background. That's pretty much going to cover the entire negative space that we can see right now. So I'm just drawing a rough uh, texture for the mountain. Now for this composition, I want the light source to be on the top left corner of the screen. That's where the sun will be. From, that's where the main primary source of light will be coming from. So for the background mountain, um, the surface of the rocks that are facing that side will have all the light hitting it and the surfaces facing the other side will be in the shadows. So that's why I'm using the lasso tool to select some shapes and filling with colors with a bit of gradient to show that light is coming from that corner, the top left corner. What I'm doing now is I'm creating depth and a great way to show depth, to show that an object is far away in the background is to have minimal, is to have minimum contrast in the texture. You don't want to show a lot of details in these things that are so far away. And a great way to do that is uh, by picking a mid-tone or even a highlight tone and painting it on top of the whole thing. And what happens is that uh, the, the darker shadows, they become lighter. And they inherit some of the colors from the highlight. So that way what happens is that the, 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 the difference in values between the highlights and and the shadow becomes a lot less. There's very little difference so the contrast goes down and it gives a sense that these objects are very far away so they don't draw your attention compared to objects that have high contrast and high details. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to make the background not only low in contrast to pull minimum attention but also I'm trying to make it cool. I'm trying to make it bluish. Now according to color harmony uh, if an object is cool if it has cool colors like blue then it does not draw as much attention as objects with warmer colors like yellow orange red and so on so if you want your uh, subject or focal point to draw attention you might want to put some warm really bright warm tones in there and if there are any negative spaces that you don't want people to look at too much then it's it, it's a good choice to make it cool 
like right now I'm turning the background into a cooler color and the reason this happens at the, the, the low amount of contrast the low details is that uh, for this mountain for example there's probably miles and miles of layers of air dust fog and whatnot at, at atmosphere between uh, between the viewer and that object so all of these carries uh, density which which eliminates the details with increasing distance uh, that's why we do this after um, creating a bit of depth in the background with the help of some haze and some blue bluish tone and some brightness some 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 fog what i'm doing now is i'm um, trying to give the illusion of water and the best way to show that yeah a particular material is water it's not grass it's not rock it's water is to create is by creating reflection so i'm duplicating the whole thing that i created the whole combination of the the mountains and the background the foreground i'm making a copy of the whole thing and i'm pasting it and I'm flipping it upside down vertically and now we have a reflection I'm trying to make the meeting points merge better I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, color grading to make it a bit of a little bit cool and then I'm gonna add some blur and for this I'm gonna add some motion blur vertically it's gonna, and as you can see I'm varying the degree of motion blur I'm trying to make the bottom area of the reflection much more blurry to show that it's slowly fading out with the increasing amount of ripples and waves in the water I want to add a bit of vignette effect in the foreground area to show to, to sort of guide the tension away from the foreground and towards that area where I'm casting some light right now because I want the light to hit that area directly and now I'm going to create some shadow cast shadow of the mountain on the left which is falling on the water that's what I'm creating I'm gonna add some edge blur to the shadow I'm gonna erase it, a bit of it so you can show that uh, transparency in the water and now I'm gonna add some shadow to the mountain because right now our, our composition has gotten somewhere and it's quite visible that the light is coming from the other side so whatever we're creating is primarily in the shadow area so i want this mountain to be darker and it i need it to blend a bit more in a better way with the shadow and the other mountain on the right side is going to have a lot of ambient light environmental glow hitting it so it's going to be a bit brighter than the than the mountain on the left side with more shadow what I'm doing now is um, I, I imagine that the foreground land mass that I have is going to be in the shadow area. I don't want to make it too bright. I don't want to cast any bright light on it. I want it to be fully in a shadow area. So I'm going to make it dark. I'm going to create low contrast. I'm not going to have. I'm, I'm not going to create a lot of contrast over there because I don't want the viewers to look there. So I'm going to do everything I can to pull the tension away from there. It is again another tool to guide the viewers attention away from a certain area and for me this is the foreground i don't have any important objects i don't have a lot of details in the foreground It's primarily a very dark shadowy area and there's absolutely nothing interesting going on that's gonna draw the attention of the viewers so that's the whole purpose of having this foreground it's a trick it's a compositional tool even the highlights falling on the rocks in the foreground suggest that you should look away from it, you should look towards the place where the light is coming from. You should look more towards the source rather than the effect the source is having on me or the foreground. What I'm doing now is I'm adding some glow, I'm adding some highlight on the very background landmass where the light is hitting directly right behind the mountain. I imagine that the mountain on the right side is further away from the mountain on the left side. So I'm going to adjust the values of the card and I'm going to pick a cooler color and I'm going to paint it on top of it to, to give the illusion that it is far away, a bit more, far, a bit farther away. I'm adjusting the value of the reflection as well. And now I'm adding some glow on the landmass in the background where the light is hitting directly. I'm creating some glow there and I'm adding some fog. In the horizon where the water is supposed to meet with the mountains another purpose of things like these like dust and mist is to sort of blend in places where things are coming in contact with each other for example over here we have the mountain and the and the river water merging with each other so i'm using fog to sort of hide that area to uh, not pull too much tension towards those areas of contact and I'm adding some blur to those mid that mist 
to make it more natural and finally I'm gonna draw our subject for this composition which is a boat I'm gonna draw the sails it's gonna be white and bright again with all the uh, mid-tone colors in the background having some very bright white values is gonna create a contrast that's automatically gonna pull the viewers attention towards that right now the boat looks like it's floating it's not in contact with the water it's sort of hovering on the water now a great way to show that it is in fact in contact with the water is by creating some reflection and to show that it is far away in depth we can add some fog finally i'm drawing the reflections of the sail i'm going to add some blur some motion blur and now it looks like yeah that boat is in fact sailing on the water i'm going to add some glow on the sail now uh, i'm going to add some glow on the water as well where i intend the light to hit directly on i'm going to add some more highlights on the mountain on the right side rather the banks pay attention to all the leading lines drawing the viewers attention towards that boat all the lines all the mountain the shape of the mountain where i'm adding some highlights right now the shape of the mountain the shape of the river bank everything is pointing towards that boat setting some subtle highlights on the foreground rock because it is in fact going to uh, react with all that light and at the very end I'm doing what I'm doing now is I'm creating some subtle ripples on the water and to create that I'm just picking the colors from one area of the water and painting it on the other area and so on I'm just exchanging colors that's all and I'm gonna add a, just a little bit of motion blur there I'm trying to make the reflection more natural with some more ripples on it and some glow. I'm trying to adjust the values a bit better by painting appropriate colors on areas. I'm trying to create a bit more contrast in the background to, to show that the mountains are in fact pretty far away from the mountain in the very background. The bluish mountain in the background. And finally I'm gonna add some haze on the left, uh, on the left mountain to show that there is in fact a bright warm sun casting all the light on the top left area i'm gonna adjust the opacity of the light a bit more and finally what i'm doing is i'm trying out i'm trying out some color lookups to see that if there are any 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 ways to improve what we have right now in terms of color and contrast i'm trying some combinations some different combinations of color lookups and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the best areas that I think are adding something on the image. I'm going to erase using mask and erase the areas that I think are not adding any value to the artwork. So that way I can keep best of everything. What I'm doing now is I'm adding uh, some roughness to the mountain outlines. Right now it looks too sharp. I'm going to add some more natural form and depth to bring out that shape solid shape of rocks and what I'm doing now is I'm adding some chromatic apparition effects I'm gonna make a tutorial video on it it's a very simple trick to make your illustration look more wholesome at the very end to add a bit of bit more color spectrum to the edges and finally I'm creating some lens flare it is another tool to indicate that yeah the light source is in fact coming from the top left corner of the scene of the environment it's like adding lens flares and at the very end what i'm doing is i'm adding some noise it's something i do and i talk about these like these are some of the tricks you can use to enhance your artworks instantly like the chromatic aberration, lens flares, color lookups and adding noise at the end. All of these things add texture and a lot more life into your artwork. to subscribe and show your support you can even buy me a coffee so that's it for now see you on the next one peace